Cedar Grove Christian Church. Pastor Rob here this morning. I hope that you are having a fantastic Friday as this video airs. I am so excited for this next part of our study as we're getting ready to dive into 1 Corinthians chapter 1 starting at verse 18. I hope that you are excited as well because we're going to talk about keeping the main thing the main thing. You may remember that we ended Wednesday's video on that very line. Keep the main thing the main thing. So what is the main thing? Join with me in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18. If you have your Bible, I invite you to turn over there. If you do not have your Bible, please pause the video, go grab it, and come back. But I will have the words on the video for you. Let's jump in this morning. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, starting at verse 18. For the word of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but it is the power of God to us who are being saved. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and I will set aside the intelligence of the intelligent. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the teacher of the law? Where is the debater of this age? Hasn't God made this world's wisdom foolish? For since in God's wisdom the world did not know God through wisdom, God was pleased to save those who believed through the foolishness of what is preached. For the Jews ask for signs, and the Greeks seek wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to the Jews and foolishness to the Gentiles. Yet to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. Because God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. What a powerful passage of scripture for us to have this morning. I'm going to tell you right now, church, that we have to focus on the main thing which is preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. And as Paul says in this beautiful passage of scripture, to some people it's going to be complete nonsense. To some people it's going to be foolishness. There are going to be people that demand for evidence. They're going to want signs. They're going to want to see miracles. They're going to want to see things to credential the message that we preach. And in the first century God provided those. However, now... We have been blessed with the full and errant inspired word of God. And because of that, we don't need the miracles to credential our message. I will not go so far as to say that there are no miracles today because I believe God is all powerful. God can do whatever he wants. I do believe and I do teach that the miraculous gifts that were handed out by the laying out of the hands of the apostles has ceased. But if God wanted to start that back up again, by all means, he has the power to do that. I don't think as some erroneously do to make the claim that anything miraculous that happens today is of the devil is a wise or appropriate thing to say. I believe that is being guilty of the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, the same thing that the Pharisees were guilty of. But we as a church must maintain that our primary focus on Sunday morning, Wednesday night, is the communication of God's holy, perfect, inerrant, inspired word. There are people in this world that are seeking wisdom, just like the Greeks were in the first century. So to them, the gospel seems foolish. However, just because it seems foolish, just because people demand signs, it does not mean we stop speaking the gospel message. It does not mean we stop preaching the gospel message, because the gospel message is the truth. It is the power for salvation. It is what people need to hear. Even though they may not want to. Even if they don't even though they don't think that they need to, it is what people need to hear. Notice what Paul says. We in verse 23, we preach Christ crucified. A stumbling block to the Jews and foolishness to the Gentiles. We have to remember, church, that the Jews did not believe the Messiah was going to be crucified. They believed the Messiah was going to come in, he was going to overthrow Rome, he was going to establish the dynasty in Israel forever. To the Greeks, the idea of a deity sacrificing himself for his creation is just foolishness. And yet, the gospel of Jesus Christ is that the very Son of God stepped out of his glory in heaven came down to be born in the most humiliating way possible and was crucified and died the most agonizing death possible so that you and I might have eternal life. 
And Paul says in verse 24, Praise be to God, yet those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God, because God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. Praise be to God that while on the cross, God's apparent foolishness is wiser than all of our understanding, and God's apparent weakness as his son hung there and died an agonizing death, exhibited more power and grace than you and I ever can in our life. Praise be to God. We instead allow things to shackle us and weigh us down. We allow things to interrupt our mission, to lead us astray, to take us off the path that God has called us as a congregation, to communicate God's holy word in truth and in sincerity. We must make sure that we remain fruitful to the, and fruitful of the mission that God has given us. So let me ask you the church, let me ask you this morning church, what is it that is distracting you? What is it that's preventing you from keeping the main thing the main thing? For some of us it might be we're ashamed. Ashamed because we don't want to be ridiculed, we don't want to suffer. But let me remind you what the Apostle Paul writes, the words will not be on the screen this time, in Romans chapter 1, starting in verse 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel, because it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, first to the Jew and also to the Greek. For in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, just as it is written, the righteous will live by faith. We preach a message that to some is foolishness. But let us be bold and continue to preach it. Let's keep the main thing the main thing. God bless. That's all I have for you today. We'll see you at church on Sunday.